Packs are one of the most critical pieces of gear needed to safely and comfortably visit caves. There's a minimum amount of stuff that every caver must carry with them, including extra light sources, batteries, extra clothing, food, and water. In all but the shortest trips, a pack is necessary to manage this additional stuff. The characteristics needed to make a good caving pack are durability, water resistance or waterproofing, depending on cave conditions, ability to function when wet and muddy, and enough volume to carry essential gear without being so large that it impedes travel. In addition to these basic requirements, it's nice to have a pack designed with a low profile that is less likely to bump into walls or the ceiling, is easily pushed or dragged through crawls, that can be easily tethered when on rope, is easy to open and close, and is easy to repair. Before caving-specific gear was designed and sold, many cavers used army surplus gear including gas mask bags. Most standard commercially made backpacks are not suitable for caving due to weak fabric, weak seams, zippers and buckles that clog with mud, or some other shortcoming. We are fortunate today to have a variety of caving specific packs to choose from, such as those from GGG, Cave Skins, Petzl, Lost Creek, Onrope One, and Swago. Of all of these packs, the most unique and highly engineered is the Swago. The Swago pack is available in three sizes that range from 740 to 1200 cubic inches in volume. The smallest is the push, the medium is the pit, and the large size is the sink. These packs were first sold in 2003 and were highly coveted by their owners. Unfortunately, in 2015, Swago lost their supplier of fabric, and a suitable alternative was not readily apparent. It has taken two long years, but a new material has been identified, and the packs are now back in production. The design hasn't changed, other than slightly different characteristics of the fabric itself. Swago packs are made from two flat layers of material that are radio frequency welded around three sides to form a speleodynamic shape. The heat sealing process bonds the two layers together in a way that the seams are stronger than the material itself. The fabric is a high denier nylon that is impregnated and coated with polyurethane. This material is extremely strong and incredibly abrasion resistant. It's much more durable than the PVC coated nylon used in most other cave packs. The only difference between the new version of the packs and the original version is the fabric itself. The new material is slightly thinner, though just as strong, and it has a slightly smoother and shinier surface. This allows it to be dragged or pushed through crawls a little easier, and it's a bit easier to clean off any mud. The non-absorbent rubbery fabric is extremely easy to both clean and decontaminate using all approved White Nose Syndrome protocols. The packs come with two pieces of loose, high-density foam designed to pad the inside of the pack. I have frequently used my Swagos without the included foam, but doing this makes it more likely that a hard edge will cause a cut or puncture if the pack is dragged for long distances, so I recommend using the foam. The packs have a roll closure with two loops that are secured with a carabiner. This waterproof closure design is inspired by roll top dry bags. One difference is the use of a carabiner to close the ends rather than a buckle. This is actually a little more secure and more maintenance free. Buckles will become clogged with mud and eventually break. The other unique feature of the Swago roll top is that it is designed to be used with the opening facing down. When carried this way, the widest and thickest part of the pack rests in the caver's lower back which keeps the center of mass lower and keeps the overall pack shape much lower profile. This pack shape allows the Swago to be worn like a standard backpack in many stoopways or crawls where other packs would need to be removed. The pack straps are made of one inch flat webbing, which is more durable than tubular webbing, and the ends have a series of sewn openings that when combined with a series of holes on each side of the pack itself, gives a fair amount of adjustability without the need for buckles. The center of the strap is an ingenious design. A bite of the webbing is fed through a grommet at the top center of the pack and secured with another carabiner. This is an extremely strong connection point to the pack, and any stress is evenly distributed around the grommet. Additionally, by pulling on the carabiner, the webbing will slide through the grommet and the shoulder straps are quickly converted into a tether. The tether can be used to clip the pack to a gear sling on the harness when vertical caving, or for dragging the pack in long crawlways. There are two popular ways to drag these packs by either using a second tether and clipping the pack to a waist belt, or clipping the pack to an ankle. Some cavers will wear a chicken loop around their ankle and clip the pack tethered to this loop. Note that Swago also makes high quality chicken loops. I prefer keeping the pack closer to my foot when dragging it through crawlways, so that I can more easily maneuver it around obstacles, so I prefer to simply girth hitch the tether to my ankle. I replace the keychain style carabiner that comes with the Swago with a standard notchless carabiner. 
This carabiner takes a lot of force and I prefer it to be strong, large enough to easily clip and unclip, and without a notch to avoid snagging. Most cave packs are water resistant, but the Swago is the only pack designed for caving that is truly waterproof. To ensure it is fully waterproof, it should be inspected periodically to ensure there are no holes in the fabric. Don't overfill the pack. You need to leave a bit of room at the top for at least three folds of the roll top closure. Make sure the two sides of the pack opening are aligned and push on the body of the pack to exhaust any excess air. Tuck the one side under the flap on the opposite side. Then roll the top down three to four wraps, bring the loops together in the middle and clip them with a carabiner. This is a much easier system than using a non-waterproof pack with a dry bag inside. And the Swago is completely non-absorbent so it doesn't get any heavier when wet. The waterproofing on the Swagos is extremely good, but not foolproof. I would not trust it with anything critical such as digital survey devices or camera gear. I would still use secondary dry containers for this type of equipment. However, many people do use the Swagos to carry things like drills and batteries. Just be aware of the limitations and don't expect those things to remain dry if you drag them through a sump without secondary protection. There isn't much that can go wrong with Swago packs, but most issues can be easily repaired. Scott McCrea, the inventor of the Swago Pack and owner of Swago Gear, has been extremely helpful with repairs. Cuts or holes in the fabric can be patched with a layer of Aquaseal on the outside of the pack. Aquaseal is a urethane-based adhesive, so it bonds extremely well with the pack material, and it's extremely durable once cured. There isn't much to dislike about Swago Packs. They are a bit expensive, roughly twice the cost of most other cave packs, but they will last four times as long. The new material also quickly shows signs of fraying around the edges, which the old material didn't have. This is purely cosmetic, and a lighter can be used to heat seal the ends to prevent it. As for things I like, there's no better pack for wet conditions. With care, the Swago can be used to keep gear dry without the use of heavy and bulky alternatives like pelican boxes or darren drums. There's also no better pack for dragging through long crawls. I use it as a camp pack in Jewel Cave, which has very long and low crawls, I also recently used it to get out to the end of Left of the Trap in Crystal Cave in the Mammoth Cave system. I have the original versions of the Push and Pit packs, and with the exception of a few minor repairs following miles of dragging, they are both fully functional and waterproof after eight years of heavy use. There are some other unique uses of the Swago packs. Because they are fully waterproof, they float and have been used as makeshift flotation devices to help with buoyancy of cavers as well as cave gear. The flat and stiff material has allowed them to also be used as splints for fractured limbs and as a temporary rope pad. These packs can be bought directly from Scott at SwagoGear.com or either Intermountain Outfitters or OnRope1. Links to these sites can be found in the description below.